today from NYU Game Center. I'm a project coordinator there, uh, which means I work on a bunch of projects. Mainly, I run our grant, fund, uh, grant program. Um, so this is me as a bird. Um, so I run our grant program at NYU, um, and I'm mainly going to be talking about one grant from New York State. Um, outside of managing grants, I have a little newsletter called The Sportswoman, and um, that's a weekly email that goes out about all the news in women's sports. So if you're interested in that, in addition to games, I'll share the link with you later, and you can check that out as well. But first, we're going to talk about uh, grants, basically. So what I'm going to do is take you through three micro case studies um, about three different schools who got a great... Uh, great state grant. Um, and then for the second half of the talk, I'm going to tell you how you can do some of these things yourselves if you don't have a huge grant from the state or somewhere else. Um, mostly, we wanted to share our budgets. I don't think a lot of grant programs and academic programs obscure those things. So I think it's sort of interesting that all three of these schools have gotten together and are sharing these things. Um, so I want to share those with you um, and then give you some tips and show you a lot of cute birds. So uh, first, a quick sort of big picture overview. Um, New York State has a grant program funding digital gaming. Um, so for this grant, three New York State universities uh, that had game programs um, applied for this grant. And um, they were given money to increase the awareness of the industry um, inside the state and outside the state. Uh, California, uh, you guys have a lot of jobs and a lot of game companies. And New York wants those jobs and those game companies. So, <laughs> so we're here to uh, hopefully bring some of those jobs to New York. So this is a three-year matching grant, um, and that means that the school spends every dollar that the school spends towards the grant, the state will also spend a dollar. Um, so they did that up to $150 um, per year. So we were each spending 300, roughly $300,000 a year. So that was $900,000 total per school, and about $2.7 million overall. So the state was really investing in this. Uh, it's really important to bring jobs out to New York. So uh, before I tell you about the schools, I wanted to do a shout out to the other schools uh, who are working on this. So Rob and Jen from RIT, Amanda and Ben from RPI, um, Judy and Matt, they are our New York State um, contract officers. They're really great and helpful. Dylan, Kevin, and Colin at NYU, they're the people who work with me on this every day. And then also Gwena and Paul, who uh, listen to me fret about talking in front of a room full of people. Okay, so now we're into the fun part of the talk where I briefly explain how does this work. <laughs> New York State, uh, Empire State Development said, okay, we have a lot of money and we want even more money and we want to get that money by bringing games to the state. Um, so they want economic growth and they're trying to do that through games. So uh, our three schools said, hmm, okay, we have like, a bunch of students who want jobs we know the local industries, um, and we could use some money. So we all said, great, we would absolutely love to do that. So um, the three of us got this grant, and uh, this is sort of how we felt when we got the grant. We were just like, ooh, money, this is nice. Uh, it's pretty exciting to get a grant. You feel like you can do anything. So then we started working on the grant, and the state's like, all right, great. We're really excited to have you. You've got to match all of your spending. We're not going to just give you money. Um, you got to send in a bunch of reports. You're going to attend a bunch of events. We want you to create jobs. That's the goal here. Uh, you have three years to create a bunch of jobs. Um, and maybe if you can do it, like get Riot or Blizzard or somebody, get them to move to New York. It's a really cool place. Like, we want them here. Uh, don't you think you can do that? And we're like, yeah, we got a bunch of money. We know everybody. Like, let's do this. Um, but wait a minute. What are those little stars? The little stars are all of the things that happen when you get a grant that you're not ready for. Um, so for example, there are a lot of spending restrictions. You can't just spend whatever you want. Um, the state tells you you can't spend in certain ways. Your school tells you you can't t spend it in certain ways. So you're working within some certain constraints based on what both of those places say. You spend a lot of time waiting on signatures. Um, let's see, sometimes the categories for how you can spend are really specific and you know exactly how you can spend it, and other times they're incredibly vague, and you're like, can we spend a lot of money on pizza? Um, then you spend a lot of money on the pizza, and the state's like, you can't spend money on pizza. Uh, so, so these things happen. Uh, it's, it's not always as, as easy and as um, 
danceable as you would like. Um, things take a lot of time and a lot of paperwork. So how you actually feel when you're managing a grant is more like this. You're just sort of in it. You're like there trying to do all the paperwork, trying to keep the school happy, trying to keep the state happy, trying to create jobs. You really are doing a lot of things at once. Um, okay, so now that I've given you a quick little review about that, I want to tell you about uh, each of the schools that got the grant. Um, I'm gonna do just a really brief intro on each of the three programs um, and then uh, tell you how they, what their goals were and how their budgets looked. Um, and um, the, th the other schools are actually right here in the front. So at the end, during Q&A, if you have questions for them about the specifics, they're here and they can help you out a little better than I can. Uh, okay, so everyone got to pick their birds, first of all. Uh, so NYU, we're the, skateboard the skateboarders. Um, but we're going to start with RPI. So RPI is in Troy. Uh, their academic program is the Game Simulation um, and Arts and Sciences program. It's an undergrad program, roughly 160 students, 14 faculty. Um, and the goal of the program is to give students a comprehensive understanding of interactive digital media, um, including um, games from a really ra wide range of perspectives. So their goal, goals for the grant, um, their main goal was to provide a three-step path for students to enter the game industry while retaining local talent. So we want people who are here, going to school, to stay here, and get jobs, and we want the people who are already here to st also stay and like grow that community. Um, so they did that through incubator programs, local partnerships, economic development partnerships, um, and increased presence at events. You're gonna see that a lot of these are similar. Um, this, this first uh, breakdown of spending though is actually um, sort of an outlier. So uh, as you can see, they spent the most amount on an incubator program. Other programs, um, in this grant are running an incubator as well, um, but um, RPI is putting the most effort behind their incubator out of the three. Um, the other big categories are salary and fringe, um, and that's sort of a recurring thing. Uh, you need people to run these programs, and so that's where a lot of spending for all three of us is going. Um, and then their next big category was community partnerships, um, and you can speak with them a little bit more about those, because I think that they're pretty specific and interesting. Um, equipment and travel are other things. Okay, for RIT, they're in Rochester, New York, um, and they run the RIT Magic Center, and there's uh, an undergrad and graduate program in interactive games and media, and um, they're a little bit larger, 220, uh, admitting, I, think, I believe admitting 220 students per year? Yeah, okay, great. Um, and so they have a university-wide research center that's more multidisciplinary and entrepreneurial. Um, so they're, they're all about, like, creating and sustaining careers, growing the industry like at, in that center, separate from this grant. Um, and they focus a lot on digital media education and production. So uh, that focus on education uh, means that they collaborate with a lot of um, K-12 institutions, schools, and after-school programs. Um, they also spend a bunch of time with entrepreneurial activity. Similarly, they want to keep their local talent, um, and they want to grow the businesses. Um, so their bigger goals um, were changing public perception around games and so just like telling people games are here, they're not just like something you should play with, they're like really important in a lot of other ways. Um, and transforming industry attitudes, saying New York State is great, California is sunny, but New York is also really wonderful. Bring your, bring your business here. If you're from California, let me know at the end of this if you're convinced. We have another deck. Okay. So RIT, uh, this one's a little different. Um, the, most of the spending is going towards salary and fringe, um, but a huge chunk is um, on things like events and travel. So GDC is one of those things. Um, they're here every year, they've got a really great booth, be sure to check it out. Um, in addition, they've got some money going towards marketing uh, and also students and contractors. Finally, the Game Center, this is where I'm from. Uh, we're in Brooklyn, it's really great. We have an MFA and a BFA program, and we have roughly 200 students in both of those programs, and 10 faculty. Um, and we are dedicated to the exploration of games as a cultural practice, um, of a cultural form, sorry, and game design as a creative practice. Uh, and our goals, so again, these are very similar. Uh, we wanted to create a more sustainable game ecosystem in New York City. That's an expensive place to live. We have a lot of indies. So we wanted to sort of help support those indies and help them grow. 
Um, and we want to help our students start and work in those companies. Um, we also have been working on tax incentives. Um, that's an important thing to move a large company out. Uh, you need to have tax incentives. So we've been working a little bit on that. And also we really wanted to bring together local stakeholders. The city is a really big, busy place and it's hard to get people together. So one of the things we did um, was we started an advisory board. Um, we also grew our incubator, so we opened it up to the public. It was previously just open to NYU students, so now it's open to other folks in New York State and over around the country. Uh, we also have improved our career services, uh, and we um, continue to grow and expand our free public events. Uh, so our grant spending looks like this. Um, again, a lot of money into salary and fringe, and also our incubator. So we have a summer incubator that's uh, three months funding for teams. Uh, we put a lot of money into our events. We like to host a bunch of different events. We have a conference. Um, we have an artist, a no quarter um, event, which is uh, commissioned artists. Um, and then we have a bunch of weekly play test events and a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, and also GDC, we have a booth too. Actually, all three schools has have a booth. So you should check them out. Uh, so here's the spending side by side, so you can sort of get a, a better idea of who's spending what and where. Let's leave this up for just a second. Okay. So for a few takeaways, um, all the schools, we had similar goals. Um, in the end, we wanted to bring companies out to New York and make people more aware of games. Um, so there's no right way. I think we all sort of approached it similarly, but in, in ways that made sense for our individual institutions and communities. Um, so there was no right way. Um, another thing, incubators are really popular, not only within games, but New York State has a bunch of incubator-related initiatives. Uh, so right now, I think a lot of people are sort of thinking about that structure as a way to grow companies. Uh, and finally, grants are not as easy as you think. Um, it is nice to hear you're getting a bunch of money, but it's, it's, there's no golden ticket with grants. So getting a huge grant doesn't necessarily mean you're getting an extreme makeover, um, though uh, RIT did get a really new, nice, cool building. Um, I don't have a picture of it, but you can, you can, you can check it out. It's very nice. Uh, okay, so now we're going to switch gears, and I'm going to give you um, four sort of tips on what you can do if you don't have a grant. Um, it's maybe not a huge problem. The first thing that I would recommend if you are a university is to get some university support. There are three specific offices at NYU that I had no idea about and had never worked with until we got this grant. And those are governmental affairs, sponsored projects, and the development office. Um, I did a little test before this to just sort of see how easy it was to track down who these departments are at other institutions. So I just picked a couple of schools I don't really know much about. I picked Carnegie Mellon, um, American University, and just Googled those school names plus Department of uh, Governmental Affairs or sponsored programs, and I found them right away. So this is, that's super easily Googleable, at least for big schools. Um, so I would say get in touch with those folks. Um, when you get in touch with them, they can sort of give you the lay of the land in terms of what's going on locally with like your state government or your local government. Um, maybe there's like a games or media or technology initiative in the area that you, you know, haven't heard of. Um, you can also tell them to like keep an eye out for those things so that you don't have to do that work of like always paying attention to what's going on. Um, you can have like backup, somebody else looking into it. Um, the sponsored programs and development office, um, once we talked to them, they started um, reaching out to places they thought might be interested in sponsoring game programs. So that's another option. Um, if you don't know exactly where to go for funding, those resources exist in most institutions and you can use them, or you should use them. I would totally recommend it. Um, from my experience, they're all really nice, really smart people who just want to help you. So first of all, number one, university support, use it. Uh, number two is to um, map out and make connections with your local stakeholders. This has been super important for us at the Game Center and I think at the other schools as well. Um, in uh, New York City, there are like two or three other university programs with game programs. 
Um, and usually we're like, those are our competitors, we don't wanna talk to them. But once we started talking to them, we realized that their students were having the same trouble like finding jobs locally as ours were. Um, so talking to other universities helped us sort of like figure out that all students in the area were having trouble with this and we needed to better prepare them to look elsewhere or we needed to like bring this, you know, keep working to bring the companies to us. Um, other examples are alumni. Uh, they are students who have experience finding jobs and you can, you know, have like little mini interviews with them and, and see how they did it and what they would recommend. Um, similar to the um, university offices, local government sometimes has good tips um, and it's great to have them on your side because uh, they can sort of help advocate for you when they see an opportunity um, that you wouldn't have access to otherwise. Um, so this, this list can be like dozens of other places, but these are some of the most common ones um, that I think all of us have tried to build relationships with. All right, number three, I think this is actually the most important one, so I'll probably spend a little bit longer on it. Um, one of the things that we did at the Game Center was we created an advisory board. Um, this, we started with the local stakeholders. We figured out who's important in these places, who are we not talking to? Um, and we built this board of advisors and we invited them to regular meetings. Um, and at those meetings, we did some, something called field reports. Uh, and you can structure this based on what sort of needs your group has. But what we did was everyone would sit down um, and the first thing that we would do is we'd go around and ask each other um, what has surprised or frustrated you lately? And you're only allowed to say one thing. And so we would go around and we had people from everything from indies to um, AAA companies, media companies, uh, game journalists, other schools. We had like a pretty wide range of people, games for change and nonprofits. Um, we had everybody together, and when we did these field reports, just asking, like, what's been surprising to you in games, or what's been frustrating for you, um, we found a lot of common ground. And also, it sort of exposed us to places we weren't familiar with. So, like, I don't really know, uh, as, like, someone who works at uh, an academic institution, that tax breaks are super important for um, a AAA uh, studio. The folks we worked with from, like, Take Two were saying, like, yeah, we, like, send a bunch of our stuff out to California to be done because there are tax breaks there, or to Canada. Um, so we learned a lot, we all learned a lot about what people were struggling with, and um, we sort of built relationships with each other. Um, and once we started learning what everybody was struggling with, it was much easier to sort of make action plans. Um, so that's what we started to do next. We started making some plans of action. So one thing we realized was that um, New York City specifically, um, has like some really good funding and support for film programs, but not necessarily for other types of media. So um, we have been working for like all three years on um, developing like a good relationship with um, New York City's like Office of Media and Entertainment. And it's taken so much time. Uh, people change jobs, uh, people forget about meetings, like we forget about meetings, like it took a long time. So. Um, once you've got your advisory board, start making plans and then start putting those plans into action. I know it sounds super basic, but you know, if you can just like sort of hold yourselves and your, your communities like accountable for these things, like you can like get people together and you can sort of like find that one person at the government off the governmental office who wants to answer your email and have coffee with you. Um, all right. So once you do the plans of action, yeah, you got to know it's going to take some time. Probably the, the, uh, idea that you had in your head of how this is gonna work out is not how it's gonna work out, similarly to when you have a grant. Um, and things will probably take you on a different path, which is not always a bad thing. It can be really great. Uh, okay, in conclusion, money can help, but community building and goal setting once you have a community uh, can actually get you pretty far. Um, and once you've established a board or you know, a regular sort of meeting group, it's a lot easier to get funding because you've sort of already built that structure up and you have stuff to work off of. You've sort of proven that um, you know what's at stake and how to get there. All right, so that is the end of my talk. Thank you, it was really fast. There's so much more. Uh, I think I could probably spend the entire talk just explaining how the grant worked. Um, and, uh, so I guess I'm gonna leave the rest of the time. We got about like nine, 10 minutes, about 10 minutes for questions if you have questions. 
Um, we've also got the other schools here. I won't make you come up here, but they're here. So if you want to chat with them about their specific programs, um, please do that. I think they'd probably be really excited to chat with you. Um, and then finally, my last plug is for the Sportswoman, uh, which is a sports newsletter, again, about women. It's great. It's very fun. Thank you. All right, we got a couple of questions. Um, and if you can, um, I don't have the paper with me, but I think you're supposed to introduce yourself. Let's just say, like, your first name. Okay. Hi, I'm Andre Thomas from Texas A&M. Um, great talk. Thank you so much. Have you measured the effectiveness of this program? How effective actually has it been? How many companies have been created? How many big publishers have moved to New York? If totally. Any, do you have some data on that? Yeah, that's a super Thank great you. question. Um, when I was putting this together, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much more I should add. And that was actually the first thing that I um, wanted to add. Um, we do have that. I don't have a slide for that right now. Um, I guess um, I would say that in terms of like measurable success, um, New York State at least thinks <laughs> it has been um, a worthy investment. The grant ended in 2018, but now all three schools have been refunded as um, centers of excellence, which is um, basically like double the funding for, um, for each year. So um, we have continued funding from the state. So I think they've seen that we are sort of making improvements. Um, I don't have the exact number of like jobs created on me, um, but if you email us, I can put together a few slides. It might take us a week to get for me to get in touch with everybody and get all these info, all this info. But we do report that on our reports to the state, so I can get that together and I can put those up on Twitter. Those slides with those numbers and stuff. Um, so far, no AAA company has notified me that they are moving here, <laughs> but tell them we're waiting. <laughs> Hi, my name's Chris, um, and I'm trying to do exactly what you folks did uh, in my part of the UK. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how did you manage expectations at the beginning of this collaboration between the universities? Because much like in the UK, universities here are their own and uh, financial corporations. So how did you decide who took Riot if they decide to come to, the, <laughs> to, to yeah, New York totally. and so on? Yeah, great question. Um, I think we really lucked out. The three of us, the three schools, um, we all get along really well. We're operating as individual institutions, so we all have our own sort of goals and ways of doing things. But we've all been really flexible in terms of coming together and like working together and making sure we've got like we sent. I send out the like invites to their community events, and they send out ours and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know if we we really like set up expectations. We just sort of like. That, that I think you should set up expectations, but I think we just sort of naturally um, were excited to work together. Um, there's another part of your question. And it say. is, oh, if Riot decided to come, how would we decide? I think Riot would probably decide where they were going. Um, each of our, our um, parts of the state are very different in terms of um, the population and like what sort of housing is available and what sort of infrastructure for companies is available. So I think probably that would fall to the company um, and I think any of us would be like super stoked if a company moved it to any of our towns. So I think since we're all really excited and like we would consider it a win if any of us um, had that sort of success. So I, I think it's not particularly competitive. It's more collaborative. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a program director for a middle school in uh, Dallas Fort Worth. And so I'm coming here as a researcher, but also coming as a interested uh, admin to figure out how I can expand our program. Uh, and so I'm interested in figuring out uh, how we can start creating some university partnerships at the middle school level from a public um, edu educational institution and to connect that with privatized uh, educational research institutions or collegiate par partners or just to um, expand our network so that we can keep our growth because we received a grant, but now we don't have uh, additional funding any longer besides what we have to maintain salaries. Sure. Okay. Well, that's great. I'm sure your um, your students are very excited. Yeah. Um, let's see. Our university works, at least our department works less with um, elementary, middle school, and like high school programs. We don't work with them a ton. But I know one of the other schools does do that. Yeah. Ben is shaking his head. So um, I would say chat with these guys afterwards because they okay. have more experience working with them. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Juno Moro from the City University of New York. Um, oh, you're a neighbor. Uh, so I was wondering, 
So we have nearly 400 students um, in our program and two full-time faculty members and no staff. And I was wondering if you had any recommendations for grants if we don't have money to match funding uh, for like a public school. I don't know if you do. Yeah. It's a very different situation from yeah, the others, that's a, so. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, hmm, okay, uh, off the top of my head, um, for getting grants, I would say, I mean, you could also check out the, um, I'm sure like CUNY, the CUNY schools have some sort of like governmental affairs. This stuff is happening in New York State, so I would imagine there are some, I know like we could put you in touch with the folks, um, at least with New York, in New York State who work with like the um, sort of like grants and incubator programs and like accelerators for that sort of stuff. Um, hmm, I don't know if I have something off the top of my head, but um, I mean maybe, um, your school is someone who we should like get into our mix of like advisory board members um, because I don't have an answer for that right now, but I imagine there is some resource available. Okay, thank Sorry. you. Sorry. It's okay. Hi, my name is Victor. Um, do you have any international uh, programs, partnerships? Uh, I, I, I'm a professor at uh, Brazil Brazil, and I already have contact with um, incubators that may help con uh, create game game development studios. But the problem there is the well, there are plenty of problems there to create a, 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 a business there, game business there. So sometimes it's better for us to create something in the United States and control it over there, something like that. I don't know if you, if you, you could help me in, in that sure. way. Hmm. Let's see, we don't, I don't know about the other schools. I know, I don't think right now we have any um, international, par any partnerships with any other schools. Um, but uh, I think like to the extent that we have those sort of like relationships, it's more of a like, we'll travel somewhere and like give a talk or we'll invite people to come be like a visiting scholar in our program. Um, I don't know, I don't know much and haven't really worked on those sorts of partnerships. Um, but we'll, we'll, again, we could totally talk about it and see what you're looking for and. Yeah, we'll do, be open to, to negotiate something. Yeah, we talk, yeah, to talk, yeah, definitely. We're happy to like listen sure. to like where other folks are, what other folks are working on. So yeah, we can, again, chat afterwards. I can give you my card and we can maybe follow up on email or something or Great. later at the conference. Great. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I think we have time for one more. Cool. Howdy, I'm Terry from AIE uh, over at the Seattle campus. Uh, I just wanted to know, or rather, um, what do you feel like you, do you get most out of your advisory board? And you mentioned that uh, putting together one was very useful. Uh, we have one, um, but I, my colleagues and I always wonder about like how to get the most out of them. Uh, like we're not sure how to kind of guide them to, to do that. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, that's a great question. I think we, so our advisory board has been really useful, like I said, in those check-in meetings where we sort of do the, um, the field reports. Doing the field reports sort of creates, um, I don't know if it's quite like an emotional like connection with everyone, but it's sort of, you get it all on the same page because you know you're struggling with similar things, um, or you can at least empathize with other people's struggles, um, and so I think that has really, that sort of helped uh, bring our advisory board together at that level. And from there, it was a lot easier to advocate with and for each other. Um, and it sort of just like got into people's brains when they'd be like, oh, okay, I know Games for Change is looking for um, help with their high school programs. Um, and then the universities, if we see like, oh, our high school program is coming up next semester, like we need to remember to send them to the Games for Change folks. It just sort of, I think it just like, Having regular meetings will create like better relationships between people, um, and I think it just like for us at least that has turned into just like being better at advocating for each other. Um, so I guess that's sort of how it works. And so I would just recommend. I mean, you could try that something like um, the field reports and see if that sort of helps connect people a little bit better. Um, I think we've sort of found like when people were doing it, um, they like when people were like willingly showing up, um, that is when it worked better, when it wasn't like, okay, time for the meeting. But when we were like, all right, we're having a meeting Wednesday night, join us if you can. And when they like were showing up on their own accord, that is when we sort of knew that they were like 
all in it for each other. And cool. I Thank guess you. that's what I would have to say. Okay, I think we are out of time. Thanks for coming.